coming in off a 6-6 six and six weekend with the MLB games. As you guys know, we bet a lot of dogs, so splitting in the MLB is always a good thing. We'll take 50% all day long. A uh, couple of 3-0 series leads in the NBA Conference Finals. Both Ooh. Boston and the Lakers looking done. We'll get into that. Uh, John, how you doing? Uh, pretty good weekend. Can't complain. Wasn't as dominant of a Sunday as we've had the uh, last couple of Mondays we've come on here and uh, almost came away with another good one, though. Yeah, uh, real quick recap for the guys um, because we don't do the podcast on the weekends. Uh, as Ben said, six and six in baseball, all 12 bets were all dogs. Uh, so, you know, that's a positive. Um, even the games we lose, guys, yesterday sent out um, Matt, um, Cincinnati Reds at plus 141, 915. Mm -hmm. uh, as soon as we get the lineup, that judge would be out. Um, Game close, the best you could have took at, at game time was 120. So we talk about how to beat the bookie. That's how you beat the bookie. 21 cents earn on the game. Look, um, if we're if you're a stock trader, you're buying and selling. You could have bought it plus 141 and sold at 131. Uh, that's 10 cent earn no matter how you look at it. That's beating the bookie. Um, right, this this is the epitome of right side wrong result. Uh, why, John? They lost. Now, how could it be? It's the right side, not because I was on it. I didn't move the game 20 cents. Okay. All the shops were on the Reds. That was the right side. Just yeah. didn't get the W in that one. So, um, even when we lose, lose with a tough one. Also, had the Orioles yesterday, plus 170, when the entire world was on Guzman. That line just kept going skyrocketing up. I'm going to give you a, another game that everybody else is on, but we're going to be going against. But yeah, plus 170 with Baltimore who I wrote in the preview yesterday, boasts the second best road record in the major leagues, uh, just was enough to take. So we catch a nice 170, though, then lose a tough 3-2 decision with the Mariners. Uh, Schuster, yeah. who had been uh, who showed nothing so far in his major league career, came up with a, with, a, with a great game against the Mariners. We lose a tough one-run game there. Uh, but all in all, 6-6 six six with, with baseball, six winning dogs. Hey, that included a tough fucking loss. Friday night, Ben, uh, the, the Mets Guardians. Fox hit Guardians 5 mm -hmm. Um Again, if you guys watched the show all week last week, we talked about how uh, I just felt the Mets turning it around uh, with that series against Tampa Bay. Uh, they're down 5-2 in the ninth, tied up in the ninth, uh, down 7-5, win it with the Alonzo homer in an extra innings, then come back and win the next day. You could just feel the momentum build. Uh, but – uh, with Carrasco going, I knew the Guardians would crush him. You remember, Carrasco actually pitched for Cleveland uh, most of his career. They lit him up, had a 5 nothing lead, same scenario, uh, tie it up, extra innings, take the lead in extras, only to blow it in the bottom. It's just a tough, tough, tough L. Uh, that really would have put us over the top in baseball, but this is baseball. Again, give me, I'll sign the papers right now for 50% for the rest of the year. Uh, <laughs> League baseball, and then guys are going to need a bigger safety deposit box to hold the money in. Uh, the the one game we lost, which we'll let's start talking about it in, in NBA, is over the weekend. We had won our first two of this round, um, Heat first round, uh, first game of this round, and Lakers first uh, game in this round plus seven points. Um, Heat winning outright, Lakers covering. Uh, didn't make a bet on on game two Friday night with the Celtics. Uh, that line just went too crazy. It, went, it just it was ridiculous. But it was a must game for them. We saw the spot. Being down four at the half, I saw the spot as the Celtics. That line came up at seven and a half. We hit it immediately. It went to eight and a half before, the, uh, before it closed out. Um, jump right out to a lead. Have a fourth quarter 12-point lead in and your Grant own Williams <laughs> down 1-0. And you can't win that. Not only cover you, you blow the game. No. Um, Jason Tatum, 0 for, 2, 0 for 3, I believe, 0 for 2, 0 for 3, and then 3 or 2 turnovers one way or the other in the fourth quarter. Second game in a row, he did not. Jason Tatum, who they talk about as a top five player, did not have a field goal in Boston in the fourth quarter in either of the two games. Just absolutely unacceptable. Um, so a tough L there um, in, in the one NBA game. And then you go into Miami last night. Um, 
that was just an absolute embarrassment. Um, my cousin, if you guys have followed the show, I told you he's a, he's a Boston guy uh, from up in Massachusetts. He is a lifelong Boston guy. He has sworn off uh, texting me all night long. Uh, number six, meaning uh, Bill Russell is turning over in his grave. They need Bird to come back on the court right now. It, it, was, it was ugly. Uh, Boston fans uh, giving up the ship. Um, let's just get to it real quick. Uh, Spolestra, what, how he's outcoached uh, Missoula, um, it's, it's actually embarrassing. Um, one other stat I just I do want to throw up. I believe um, in, in this playoffs, this year's playoffs, so the Heat are now, well, with that, that game too, three and two uh, in – when you, when they're down double digits in the fourth quarter, the Knicks, the, the Knicks, the Heat are three and two. Uh, the rest of the NBA down double digits, one and fifty-two. Um, what the Heat are doing, they're like they're just off the chart again. As I say, um, a, a, a regular season, uh, floundering the whole way. They lose uh, the first playing game at home to a bad Hawks team that's been in disarray uh, the entire year, switching coaches in mid-year. In mid um, dead. We had the Bulls. They were dead. Bulls had the Heat dead for four for three and a half quarters. Uh, heat get hot in the last quarter to, to not only win, but cover the game and have been on fire since. Knocking out Milwaukee, knocking out the Knicks, and embarrassing. There's no other way to put it. Embarrassing the Celtics right now. And uh, we're talking about the Celtics and the Bucks were the two best teams coming into the playoffs. And, and when now, when you look at everything in, in retrospect, the Knicks are actually the, the, the team that given them the hardest uh, time, yeah. um, other than the Celtics and the and the Bucks. So yeah, Heat just off the chart. Me and Ben will talking about it before coming on. Uh, what do we think about these O three series? They're over. Uh, it's just a matter. Do you want to lay the number? Uh, I, I can't see the Celtics getting up tomorrow. It's heat or nobody. Um, even though my line says Celtics are still a better team on the road than the heat are. Um, not in the playoffs right now. That, that's what my ratings are, but not in the playoffs. Got to throw that out right now. Heat are on fire. Um, this goes to with baseball also. There's numbers like a, a St. Louis Cardinal team where they were. All, all of a sudden right now, they're just on fire. You can't bet against them. Yankees have turned it around. Judges come back. Uh, that's part of the reason we bet against uh, the Yankees yesterday because Judge was out of the line. It's like, yep. I think his last eight games had seven home runs, 16 RBIs, batting over four, over 400. He was on fire. They were struggling to hit 200 without him in the lineup. Uh, so, But, again, they've turned it around. Same thing here. He has just turned it around, and Celtics have gone from here to here. Um, the game tonight, the, this, this Denver Nuggets series, uh, Lakers had their shot. Uh, they went down big to start the uh, to start the game three. Um, I think they were up by as many as 14, 24, 24 to 10, I believe it was, Denver. They, they fought, they fought, they fought back and forth. Uh, Hachimura hits a couple of free throws to actually give them the lead. Uh, and then I think it was uh, Denver goes on a 13-0 run to ice them. They never get closer than seven. That had to rip the heart out of the Lakers. Don't know if they have... Uh, can show up for tonight's game. Um, Denver, nobody tonight in that one, Ben. Yeah, as far as uh, the Heat Celtics series, I mean, like you said, looking like Boston's done. Uh, kudos to Miami and Spolster, like you said, just out coaching night and day. Uh, what is it, seven and one record right now against the Celtics and the Bucks? Just two teams who we all thought that this conference was going to come down to. And Miami's just kind of uh, reminding everyone who they are. So uh, credit to them. As far as, uh, the three O spots. I think the, the record is ninety one and fifty eight in those game fours as far as completing the sweep. Uh, we all know it's zero and one forty nine as far as coming back from down three O, but uh, ninety one of the one forty nine have completed the sweep in those situations. Up three uh, O, Lakers Nuggets tough spot on this one. They really had so many opportunities in that uh, game game three there. I mean, when Jokic goes into foul trouble, Murray was absolutely out of his mind in the first half. First. The second half had nothing. And in that third quarter, the Denver role players, I mean, it was Bruce Brown, it was Aaron Gordon, random guys stepping up while Jokic was in foul trouble and Murray had cooled off. Lakers didn't take advantage of it. So for them to show up tonight, 
really tough. It's just kind of a pride thing of, you know, do they care about not getting swept? Is that on their mind? That's the only thing you can bet in this situation. Typically close out games a little bit more low scoring, lean to the under in this game and uh, lean a little bit to the Lakers. I think there is a little bit of that pride aspect. Uh, both these teams, I mean, how about Denver and Miami? You usually come in this situation you're set up to sweep the conference finals. You're usually going to get a little bit of an extended rest, and they'll have some rest still, but uh, not not quite the same as the other team going to play a six, seven-game series if they both end up coming out with a four-game sweep. While we're talking about it, so I just want to put to bed all the uh, conspiracy theorists that the <laughs> NBA uh, is going to have the Lakers, Celtics, because, guys, put please, pl- we, we try to make you guys sharp, but when we hear – guys talk like that it's just it's embarrassing so yeah no the, no conspiracy there will be no Lakers Celtic uh championship uh it's going to be Denver Miami just a matter do they get it wrapped up in game fours are they both four game sweeps which Denver has never swept a four game series before um new territory for them but different Denver team uh they get it done last game without Joker having a triple double without having one of his uh Joker games um Murray, we've been saying from the beginning, he's the two that they needed. Um, <coughs> but again, still, look, Jokic's still averaging a triple-double. I mean, is there any Crazy. doubt that he's the most valuable player um, in the league? Uh, Joel Embiid, a good player. Uh, again, I got five guys off the top of my head that are worth more to their team than Joe, than uh, Embiid is to their Joker being one of them. So, yeah, would have to go. Uh, with the two teams that are ahead 3-0, if anybody haven't made a bet yet, but if I was going with anybody, would have to be those teams. All the momentum in the world, uh, to, to, even especially the Heat. Celtics are dead. Uh, you, you looked at the press conferences. Uh, the, the, the coach looked like he was embarrassed, which he should be embarrassed. And absolutely, mm-hmm. actually, was, he literally said, I did not have them ready to play. How dare you? Why do you have a job? It's like if one day I came on and said, I don't know who's going to win today because I, I didn't look. Were you kidding me? You know, I didn't do my studying. How do you have a team ready to play game three Eastern Conference Finals? Uh, I'd, I'd fire him. Um, bring that other guy back so he abuses the girl. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> like a- yeah, you do Yeah, apparently, apparently the thing with him was uh, he slept with one of the owner's wives, which I would say is a, is a no-go. It's uh, probably a no-no in, in any corporation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, they could, they could use that help. As far as you're saying about, uh, you know, the conspiracy theories about it's going to be Lakers, Celtics, Lakers, Celtics, I think it's time that the conspiracy theories come, come all the way around now. Uh, I think uh, I saw, I don't know how many videos I saw on BR betting and other just social accounts about it's rigged. It's rigged. The script is leaked. It's going to be Lakers, Celtics, Lakers, Celtics, just for both teams to go down 3-0. Maybe that was the, uh, the inverse thinking. They got all these guys betting on Lakers and Celtics uh, the last couple of days, chasing, chasing, chasing. Oh, they can't win two in a row. Oh, they can't win three in a row and keep going against it. So uh, maybe maybe we flipped the conspiracy there. Guys, this is why we, we try to tell you, please don't be a sucker. Uh, sharpen up, listen to us, stay away from all this ridiculous. Vegas won't let this team win. The NFL won't let that team win. The NBA is going to have these mm-hmm. teams. It's, it's just not how it goes. Uh, do referees make bad calls? Yeah. Do referees or umpires have it in for certain players, certain sure. coaches, maybe certain owners? Absolutely. Um, Mark Cuban, if you guys are, are – uh, NBA fans for quite a while. How many times you see Cuban getting out there arguing with the official? He's got no business being on the court. Mm-hmm. Um, do referees who probably make a nice salary but aren't billionaires resent Mark Cuban if he's coming out on the court to show them up? Absolutely. Did, did they not like certain guys that maybe want to show them up during the course of the game? Absolutely. Did they suck off guys like Michael Jordan because they're Michael Jordan? Absolutely. So that's part of the game, but that's not fixed. That's just human nature. Um, so yeah, I mean, teams got to earn calls. If you're if you're in you know refing one of these two series right now, and you see Boston just looking dead already in the second quarter, you're not going to get those 50-50 calls. You're not going to get those extra you know if it's a charge taking whatever it might be. I mean, the calls are going to go to the team putting in the effort, looking like they're in control of the game. I mean, that's just a part of that flow state as well. 
A hundred percent. So I just, just want to, you know, like I said, the conspiracy guys, there's no conspiracy. Mm -hmm. uh, if two guys knew of this secret, uh, unless you killed one of them, it wouldn't be a secret. There's, there's no keeping that under wraps. There's no, yeah. no a way to keep this whole, yeah, it's going to be the Lakers, uh, Celtics in the, in the finals, or that there's no way that the NFL is going to let this team win or the NFL wants the Chiefs to win because uh, Progressive is a big uh, uh, sponsor of the NFL. Guys, give give it a break. Give it a break. Okay. Anyway, let's let's move on to baseball. baseball. Yep. We got a uh, lot, lot of dogs over the weekend, John, and a lot of dogs to look at on this card. Uh, first one, though, Cardinals, Reds, big price. I know you and I both probably have a little bit of a lean here to Cincinnati. Wanting, we liked them kind of all throughout that Yankees series. They couldn't hit against that Yankees pitching, which really wasn't their best pitching. It was, you know, Brito, Schmidt, and then Severino off the IL. Um, today they get Montgomery, who's been struggling. And then for the Reds pitching, it's Williamson, who has uh, had one debut, one good start at Coors Field, one run and five and two thirds. That's a pretty damn good debut. Uh, Montgomery, they've lost seven straight. Can we back this cart, this Reds offense who's not hitting right now against Montgomery? Is this a get right game for Montgomery? Is it a get right game for the Reds offense? Since here, nobody, uh, if they had showed any life in that Yankee series, would be easier to bet here. Cardinals are on fire. Um, as cold as they were, and that's how hot they are. Take three or four from the Dodgers. Uh, they finished the homestand five and two. 11 and three, their last 14 scoring 7.2 runs a game. That's over 14 games. This is sustained now. We talked about it early. Uh, a lineup that's going to have Goldschmidt, Arenado, Gorman. Mm -hmm. you, you're just not going to hold them down, and and, and they've busted the they've busted it wide open. The Reds, other other side of the spectrum, uh, now dropped six to seven. Uh, Cards won 12 of 19 meetings last year. Um, Montgomery's been getting hit though. Look, uh, this is a huge overlay, not just a little. It's a huge overlay. There's no way Montgomery, with his stats, the last couple of outings. Uh, should be a well, they anywhere from a 185 to a 190 favorite on the road. But yeah. St. Louis playing that good since he's playing that bad, it would be since you nobody. Uh, if if St. Louis decides to give a Goldschmidt Arenado or somebody a break tonight, uh, in that case, I could find myself uh, on Cincinnati no other way. Kind of like yesterday. Uh, look, uh, Cincinnati basically kicked our dick in all weekend against the Yankees. <laughs> And then, the, I mean, the spot was the spot yesterday. Normal, normally, that would have been a love bet. That's one of the spots they look for a love bet. Judge was just absolutely on fire coming into the game. You had Severino um, coming off the injury list, going to make his first thought. What are you going to expect out of him? Um, so it was just a great spot. But since he's cold, the Yankees yeah. were hot, only made it a regular light bet, uh, similar to today. Um, would have to be Reds or nobody. But they, they, you, you don't want to go into that buzzsaw. That's what the Cardinals are right now. So as of right now, no bet. We'll wait on lineups on that one. Next game, also an overlay. D-backs at the Phillies. It's Henry versus Wheeler. Henry gave up four runs against the A's last time out. Prior to that, had a pair of quality starts. Wheeler, he gave up four runs at San Francisco's last time out. Before that, had a quality start versus the Jays. Uh, he's one of those guys tend to be better at home. One and one, 3.34 and five starts this year. And uh, D backs playing good ball right now. Four and two on the trip, seven and two their last nine. Phillies, uh, they won the last two after the losing streak. This is uh, dog or nobody. D backs there, big price, John. Oh, it's the dog. I'm all over this one. This, this price to me is insane. I would not make uh, Philly this high if Wheeler was pitching dominant, mm. which he's not. Uh, last three outings, 4 4 2 ERA. All right, that's not certainly not dominating. Henry, uh, um, Henry's not a good pitch. Uh, gets cracked in his last outing at Oakland. Just bear in mind, Oakland is hitting over 260 versus left-handers. Uh, opposite is true for Philly, just 234 versus left-handers and only 240 in their last six games. Philadelphia has scored more than three runs just twice in their last seven games and more than four runs only once in their last seven games. Mm. All that being said, uh, Philly deserves to be the favorite, but without Wheeler being dominating, uh, Arizona. So Arizona has the third best record in the NL, second best road record. Mm. Their fourth 
in hitting and sixth in scoring in the major leagues. This is what, not what San Diego was expected. The Daddies, to be. Arizona Diamondbacks. This is not the Marlins uh, hitting team. This is not the Detroit Tigers. This is not KC Oakland. Diamondbacks are a good squad. Huge overlay all over the Diamondbacks today. Yeah, those numbers there are what uh, San Diego was supposed to be coming into this series in that division and hasn't been. Uh, Dodgers at Atlanta next game really want to take L.A. in this spot. They have lost three of four against that red-hot Cardinals team, uh, still scoring six runs per game their last five. You have this Braves team coming in. They won two of three against Seattle. They weren't hitting the ball too crazy. They uh, scored four runs per game. Stone versus Morton. Morton's been really good. Five of his last six starts been quality starts. Stone, only one career start, roughed up versus the Phillies. Uh, that was earlier in May. Lean here to the Dodgers. Bats been going a bit better. Clear as day pitching edge here to Morton, but who knows what Stone can give you. Uh, just uh, one of those things, you know, how much did the Dodgers cool off in that series against the Cardinals? They were red hot coming into that series. Cardinals put it out. Uh, can they bounce back here? Can they overcome the pitching edge? Morton, I think, has been pitching a little bit better than he has, than he is. Maybe he can continue that. Uh, but not so much, I don't think, against the Dodgers lineup. Lean here to L.A. Yeah, have to lead to L.A. at this number. Um, Stone, why you said he did get roughed up. Look, he's he's one of their top prospects. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see what this kid got. That, remember, that was his uh, his debut, and he got he got really roughed up. Um, Morton's been real good, and he's and always better at home <coughs> than he is on the road. Um, but, yeah, Atlanta not lighting up the scoreboard. And while they've dropped three or four, Dodger bats, uh, they were they were they were still uh, hot in St. Louis. Um, so it's a lean to LA. This game would have to go higher for me to want to take the Dodgers in this spot against Morton. Uh, so as of right now, no bet on this one. Then it's uh, Marlins at Rockies. Very interesting pitching matchup: Cabrera versus Anderson. Anderson starts here with Tampa Bay as a reliever, comes over to Colorado, throws five shutout innings in his first start there against the Reds. Uh, Cabrera, they've won three of his last four starts. He's been decent, but uh, giving up 11 runs, 18 and a third, 31 Ks in 18 innings, though, 10 walks in those last four outings. Uh, this would be a slight lean here to the Rockies as a home dog. I would give a little bit of a pitching edge to Cabrera. Um, kind of a, a, a weird start for him in Coors Field because he's a guy who doesn't get hit hard. He just puts a lot of guys on base, misses a lot of bats, so you can kind of take that for what you want. It's a bad thing when you're walking guys in Coors, but he doesn't give up the big hit as much. Um, and then Anderson, we'll see if he can replicate what he did against Cincinnati. Uh, but Rockies are nobody to me at this price at home. Marlins uh, have been playing decent. Yeah, Rockies are nobody in this one. Uh, Miami, the lowest scoring team in baseball. Uh, all bets are off going to cores, uh, mm. as we know. We actually bet against Cabrera. If you had to beat the bookie, maybe you remember. Last year, uh, in his first start at, at cores, and he was pitching a gem. Uh, allowing one hit, six shutout innings. I believe we were down three nothing, but Coors Field is Coors Field. Miami came in with their relievers, and the the Rockies get the win. They split six meetings last year. Rockies winning all three in Colorado. Marlins winning all three in Miami. Um, Anderson, a nice game, uh, his first time out uh, in Colorado, but it was against the Reds, who we just said couldn't hit the Yankees' worst uh, pitching. Uh, we'll have to see what he looks like the second time around. Um, Again, we'll wait to see later, but it's home dog, uh, it's, even though it's a small home dog, or, or nobody in this one. Then it's White Sox at Guardians, uh, still waiting on a White Sox pitcher. They just put up Lambert, uh, Ben. Lambert. Lambert, okay. White Sox pitcher. So we just got Lambert in the box. It's Gaddis, who's coming up for Cleveland. He was out earlier this year, was not doing so hot. Uh, gets sent back down, gets called back up. Faced the White Sox last year, gave up seven runs in four innings, five home runs in those four innings. That's brutal. Uh, Guardians aren't hitting, and you have uh, them coming in with this White Sox team who's now all of a sudden red hot. They've been beating up on these lower-tier AL Central teams. They beat up on the Guardians earlier this week. They beat up on Kansas City. This game, to me, is uh, White Sox all the way. Yeah. Um, so uh, Thursday we talked about the uh, the top teams, the worst teams. We called it the, um, the five to fade and the sickening six, the six with being the White Sox, and I said they look like they're turning around. I feel like they are. <laughs> they sweep the series of KC. Mm -hmm. Not saying much. It's KC. But you can see they're just turning around a little bit. They're getting better pitching. Chicago looks like they're turning around. Get them out of that group of five. Um, they're playing better ball. Uh, Guardians, tough spot. Day-night doubleheader uh, and then come back home. They cannot hit. 
they cannot hit. The Guardians cannot hit. Yeah. Uh, one of the worst hitting teams in baseball. Uh, coming off a day-night doubleheader. Would it be surprised if Ramirez or somebody else gets a day off? He played in both games uh, yesterday. Uh, well, So we'll be on top of the lineups. Don't know how bad um, uh, how bad a pitcher Lambert is. They just put him in the box. Uh, we'll, we'll do some research now. Gaddis is horrible. Uh, White Sox are nobody. Uh, we'll see what the, where this line – right now it's sitting at minus 120, plus 110. We'll take a look into it as soon as we get off the podcast. Then we have uh, Toronto at Tampa Bay. This Blue Jays team, ice cold right now. They uh, lose six of the last seven there on that homestand against the Yankees. Uh, and then Baltimore comes in with the sweep. You have this uh, Tampa Bay team. They still doing what they're doing, leading MLB in pretty much everything. Uh, they haven't cooled off just a little bit, but still dominant at home. Uh, pitching edge right now, clear as day to Bassett. Bassett has just been dominant his last several starts. Uh, seven of, of the eight have been quality starts. Last three, 23 shutout innings. So I uh, got to take that for what you will. Tampa Bay going to be using a bullpen game opener with Kelly. Toronto's ice cold. This is your best shot at a win. You've going third straight series in a row. The Yankees, the Orioles, and now the Rays. This is as tough of a schedule gets here. The AL East uh, getting three straight divisional matchups against the three better teams in the division would be a lean here to Toronto. They're really getting struggling. They need the ace to show up with some ace stuff today. Uh, couldn't get it done with Gosman yesterday. Got to see if you can get it done with Bassett. Um, yeah, Toronto's lost six of their last seven. Those were all home games. We bet against them in four of those games, twice with the Yankees, twice with the Orioles at big numbers. Um, pitching advantage, you know, we say pitching edge, uh, slight pitching edge, pitching advantage, huge pitching. This is as big as a pitching advantage you get. Bassett got absolutely crushed his first time out uh, this year. Since then, 5-1 and one with a 1-7-1 ERA, and as Ben said, 23 straight shutout innings. Can't Doesn't get much bigger than that. Just Toronto, ice cold. Uh, Toronto now, uh, while, uh, where am I? Toronto's uh, 3.1 runs per game, just not scoring any runs. Um, didn't again yesterday. Tampa Bay also, uh, they we talked about regression. There was no way Tampa Bay was going to win 130 games. Mm -hmm. uh, so they, they lost yesterday to the Brewers. They've now... Uh, lost seven of their last 12 overall, just five and seven in their last 12. They're hitting for the first time this year. Um, they're second in hitting and run scored. They've been first in either or pretty much the whole year. Still lead the league in, in home runs. Uh, but, yeah, Tampa Bay, just a different team right now. They scored only 3.3 runs per game in the series against Milwaukee. Best shot is with Bassett, red-hot pitcher against the Tampa Bay team that's slowing down. Uh, even though the Blue Jays uh, ice cold themselves, it would have to be uh, Toronto and nobody. Nope, not going to get uh, Bassett at dog money much this season. Got to take it when you can. I see it as uh, next matchup. Uh, other two AL Central bottom tier teams, Tigers and Royals. You have Lorenzen versus Singer. Both pitchers kind of turn around a little bit. You have Lorenzen coming off three straight quality starts, two runs in 20 innings. Singer coming off two quality starts, uh, five runs in 12 innings. Kansas City winning both those games. Uh, as far as, you know, matchups here, Tigers won 10 of 19 meetings last year. They split the 10 games at Kansas City. Coming off that series uh, where they lose two of three at Washington. Royals coming in. They get swept by the White Sox who are playing well. This is a uh, slight lean here to Detroit. I mean, you just have two of the bottom tier AL Central teams. Both pitchers going well right now, uh, and you can get one of them at dog money. So would want a bit more there with Lorenzen, uh, but Tigers are no one. Don't see a point in laying Kansas City as a favorite pretty much at all this season. Yeah, uh, neither team can hit here. You got uh, Tigers team batting average 227, KC 228, uh, both ranking in the uh, – in the bottom part of the uh, Major League standings as far as hitting. Um, Got to give Lorenzo the pitching edge here. Uh, turned it around. These last three starts, real good. Mm -hmm. He looks real good. Singer, mixed bag, good. Ah, uh, totally different from last year. He is better than the, uh, the terrible that he was earlier in the year, but Lorenzo definitely gets the pitching edge here. It's Tigers or, or nobody not laying a penny with uh, KC. Um, at home. So, yeah, Detroit and nobody. We'll wait to see where that line goes. 
Yeah, take those uh, qual- those good starts there from Singer with a grain of salt. Was, uh, San Diego, White Sox, and Oakland, his last three starts there. So uh, as bad as it gets a little bit. Uh, Boston at the Angels earlier this year. You had Sox win three or four meetings in Boston. Uh, they won three or four meetings at L.A. last season. You have uh, Red Sox coming in. They lose to San Diego to snap their four-game win streak, but not a bad travel at all going from San Diego to Orange County. Uh, then you have the Angels now. They won three of four. They beat the Twins 4-2. Uh, you have this uh, pitching matchup. Kind of a weird game here for the Angels. They don't go bullpen game too often, but they're going bullpen game. Uh, Barrier versus Sil- or B- Barrier versus Hauk. We'll see if Sil sits, still comes out in the long relief for the Angels. He was scheduled to start originally. And then uh, Hauk, he has not been doing so hot. They've lost three of his last four starts, 17 runs and 21 and two-thirds. Uh, would be careful with betting this game early today just with Dotani pitching yesterday maybe he gets the day off today who knows something to keep a look for uh slight lean here to the Angels even at this price uh just uh, the Red Sox yes they got it going uh maybe a little bit of a revenge factor can't back how he's uh just been going too rough lately yeah both teams are hitting the ball right now Red Sox have been hitting the ball basically all year third in hitting third in scoring uh we caught the Red Sox both Friday and Saturday and had the crystal ball out, laid off them yesterday mm. as they got blanked. Uh, they'll go to L.A. today. They should be able to hit a relief pitcher in what it looks like a bullpen game. Silsith was the scheduled pitcher. So uh, they're going to start this Berea as the opener. Um, will they bring Silsith in if they do? Uh, the Red Sox got uh, the eyes will be opening against a, a bullpen game uh, in this one. Uh, but the line is right where it should be. It's still Red Sox on the road. Angels are hitting. What you do have to look out for, as Ben says, do they give Otani a day rest? Not that we're saying he, he does. It's just something you got to keep in the back of your mind. Um, being that he's a DH, uh, good chance he still plays. But as always, this is what we're looking for. And we're, we're here right up till game times to uh, make those decisions. I got nothing at, at this price. I think the price is right. It's basically a pick game. We have uh, A's at Seattle. This Oakland team, what is it now? Two and twelve the last fourteen. ML worst five and eighteen on the road. Really, really tough to back them. Really big price in this game, and I lean to the A's in it. It's Moeller versus Castillo. Moeller has just been miserable. Uh, last three starts, sixteen runs and thirteen and a third. And you have uh, Castillo. Seattle's lost his last four starts. Uh, last two, he's been better. Uh, sorry, t- ten runs, four homers in ten innings. He was not good against the A's last year. One and two, 5.17 and three starts. He has been good at home this year. This is uh, still a pitching edge to Castillo. Pretty uh, pretty big pitching edge, I would say. Just I don't know if I could agree with this price. You have the Mariners coming back from a trip at Atlanta. They weren't hitting against the Braves. And uh, would be surprised if the A's maybe steal one here. Uh, yesterday, they lose that same big price against Houston yesterday. But they keep it within two. You can get plus two and a half, minus 115. Uh, you had even yesterday. Maybe you play that plus two and a half. It's a lot of runs in this matchup. It is a lot of runs for a team that can't hit. 29th now. Um, Seattle Mariners batting 226. Uh, they do score, uh, but just hitting 226. Uh, Castillo, I had I had uh, marked Castillo. So I'm looking to bet against him in his next outing. Unfortunately, his next outing is against <laughs> the worst team in baseball historically. As I've been saying all season long, historically bad team against Muller, who is awful. Uh, now he's not average. He's not okay. He's just absolutely mm-hmm. awful. So I, I don't I don't know if Ben said it, but uh, he's given up 16 runs off 21 hits, last 13 in the third innings in the last three starts. On the road, 10.31 ERA. Can't, can't back those pitching stats <laughs> with a team that can't score. As I said, uh, when you want to take a, a, a little shot, uh, with Oakland um, against left-handers, had a tough time against uh, Valdez. Uh, it was fun, it's fun to shout out against them yesterday. But against left-handers, uh, prior to that, they'd been batting over 260. Uh, wanted to bet against Castillo in this spot. As Ben said, Seattle coming back coast-to-coast road trip. I mean, you go southeast, Atlanta, uh, Seattle, Washington. Doesn't yeah. get much worse than that. A long road trip, also a nine-game road trip. Bad spot for Seattle. Just can't bet open. If they had had Sears or somebody, this would have definitely been a spot for me. Then it's uh, Rangers at Pirates. Pirates find a little bit of stride in that series uh, there against Detroit with the bats, or sorry, against the D backs with the bats. They lose yesterday, though. Uh, you have the Rangers 
coming in absolutely smashing Colorado, 31 and 10 on the three game sweep, still leading MLB in scoring, getting 314 this week. They get the pitching edge today as well. Uh, how about what they're getting out of Dunning? He wasn't that great the last couple of years. Starts in the bullpen this year, comes back out, made three starts, three runs in 17 innings, pretty damn good. Uh, Ortiz, what is it, nine runs in eight innings his last two times out, so hasn't been good there for Pitt. This is a uh, big price here. Can't can't uh, get behind the home dog, though, with uh, Pittsburgh, just the pitching edge. If this line came down a little bit lower, could be interesting at Texas at that price. Could be interested in Texas, yeah. I, I agree 100%. Usually a home dog, you think we're going to jump all over the home dog. Not in this spot. Ortiz would be getting crushed, uh, and Texas is crushing. Um, now lead the majors in run scored and hitting. Uh, they, they, they obliterated the Colorado pitching staff. Yeah. Not that that's much, but Freeland – Freeland on the on the road is a good pitcher, and they crushed him. Uh, I, I think I went to get a snack. I came back, and we were down <laughs> in, the, uh, in the Rockies game uh, earlier. Uh, Pirates, we had the Pirates the one game that they, they crushed Galen, and then the bats go silent. The other couple, this is baseball. is how crazy baseball is. Uh, but we, we told you that day. Galen, a little bit different on the road. He had a plus four ERA, which is now uh, much higher. Can't back the Pirates in this spot, even hold a home dog. This number actually has come down since the overnight from minus 135 to one minus 130. Uh, I would love to see it go down more. Texas to nobody. And I hate betting favorites, especially road favorites. And it's uh, Houston at Milwaukee, probably pitching matchup of the day here. We have Javier versus Burns. Uh, Javier, he's been great last couple of times out. One run off two hits and in six innings versus the Cubbies. Uh, three straight quality starts. And you have Burns. He allowed three runs of six innings against a red-hot St. Louis team. So that's a quality start, but uh, put a little asterisk on it. And uh, he's been good his last uh, four starts, 2-2, two and 2.25. Two, this is a uh, slight lean here to Milwaukee. Don't love it. Uh, Houston's getting rid of them a little bit. Brewers, though, they get a big win at Tampa Bay. Does that carry over at all? Astros, they have found try. They've won seven straight. Uh, what is it, 10 of 11, playing good, uh, granted, against some of those lesser teams. Ace on the mound here as a home dog. Got to lean to Milwaukee. Uh, th this is a tough one. Great matchup. Uh, Burns pitching better. We were on him his last time out. He gave up three runs to that red hot St. Louis uh, squad. They lose three, nothing. They just couldn't score. Um, till yesterday, the Milwaukee just been challenged to score now for a while. Uh, don't want no part of them as the home dog price would have to go much higher, which all the money has gone to Milwaukee overnight. Uh, hmm. Milwaukee was, I'm sorry. All the money has gone to Houston. Milwaukee opened as a 115 favorite on the overnight. Right now, you're looking at the uh, Astros anywhere from minus 110 as high as minus 114 at Circa. Uh, they're getting all the money. I was in the middle. I did. I, I made this a pick 'em game. Uh, so I was in the middle of minus 115. Not enough to take Houston. And now that the, the script is flipped to Houston favorite, still not enough to take Milwaukee. Uh, I'll lay off this one. You got a red hot Houston squad right now. Uh, against Milwaukee, who they come away with a win yesterday against a uh, a, uh, a bullpen game that Tampa Bay does quite often. Um, they get their best pitcher on the mound, but don't know if they've got enough. They're just not scoring enough for me to pull the trigger on Milwaukee in this one. And it's Giants at Twins, last game on the card. How about the Twins, what they've been getting out of some of these pitchers? Uh, Ober, another one of these guys uh, that's uh, been making some starts lately. Three straight quality starts, four runs in 19 innings, 18 Ks, two walks, been great. And then uh, you have Brebbia going to be used as an Oper for San Francisco. Giants just 7-13 and 13 on the road. Uh, they come in, though, they won 5-6 of six on the homestand. Twins, they're going on, coming back from a long trip. They lose 4-6. of six. Uh, but they're 14 and eight at home. So is this a little bounce back spot here for the twins? Does anyone for the giants get a day off on the travel after the homestand uh, slightly in here to Minnesota, big home favorite, uh, not enough or need, I need that price to come down for me to lay the juice on it. Uh, no interest though, here on the giants on a bullpen game. Yeah, no, I agree. It would be Minnesota and nobody. Another big favorite for me. Uh, one of the question marks here though, uh, Buxton was held out of the game last night. Look, this guy's always having problems. One of the best ball players in the game yeah. when healthy. Um, so he's held out yesterday. He's questionable today. But, yeah, Minnesota or nobody uh, over pitching real good baseball for them. San Fran, as Ben said, goes with the bullpen game. Uh, San Fran played nice, uh, winning five of six on their homestand. Granted, mm -hmm. it was against the Marlins. Um, uh, on the road, not such good fortunes on the road. 
Uh, would have to want to back Minnesota or nobody. But again, price would have to be lower. And I would need Buxton in the lineup. That's the uh, MLB card, guys. Uh, obviously, the one NBA game tonight, uh, MLB travel day. So if you guys are betting these MLB games, make sure you uh, have those lineups. Who knows who's in, who's out. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we had a good start to the week. Uh, Mondays, last Monday wasn't ideal. Prior to that, last couple of Mondays have been pretty good. Uh, John, I don't know if you got anything else. Obviously, how to beat the book. You make sure you guys go to the website, download the app, uh, howtobeatthebookie.com. Go check it all out. Get all the information on these. If you guys have any questions, please ask those in the comments. Anything you guys want us to cover, anything you guys want to hear us talk about, I don't know, it can be anything and anything, uh, let us know there. But, John, you got anything else? That's it right now. So far, guys, we gave you the one bet. Um, Arizona, just a huge mm -hmm. dog. Um, I get the pissing, pitching situation. Uh, we'll definitely bet the, the better pitcher. But even if he was throwing fantastic, couldn't make the number this high. Bunch of other leans we got. Uh, line movement, lineups could make us pull the trigger. If you had to beat the bookie member, you'll find out. If you're not, you find out about it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, hopefully it's uh, good news we're talking about tomorrow. Uh, let's make some money, John. Make some money. Thank you.